slowly, but surely. Alright, yep. so we're getting there. So soon, um, for you guys, we'll have a highlight video of the top plays that happened in the series gaming lobbies. So that'll be pretty cool to see. And first band comes out, Morgana. Why well, try not gonna get Morgana? Might be how fast it was snapped off, might just be a comfort ban for Sovereign, not wanting to deal with that champion. Yeah, we've seen it a lot in the lobbies. Morgana seems to be banned pretty much every game, regardless of why I try his presence, so I'm not surprised to see a ban once again. And then with the Yasuo ban, that's another one that's pretty much banned every single game. Uh, nobody very comfortable going against it. Oh, my blockers are going off. Let me fix that, guys. There we go. Now they're right on spot. Ribbon ban aimed at Manslayer. Lee Sin and Yasuo banned for purple team. Yeah, um, around Worlds this time, we're starting to see a lot of uh, pick presence around Lee Sin again. He's going first round pretty much every single time, regardless of side. So he'll either go first pick on blue team or purple side. So he's very important again in that first rotation. Purple team noticing his power does not want to deal with it. And the NAR ban at Manslayer once again. Yeah, Nar and Riven aren't champions you typically see banned, so when they are banned, you always point at the uh, the obvious uh, respect bans for Manslayer. And Nidalee, a band we've been seeing a lot of. Really seen a lot. in the top lane. Yeah, definitely a lot of carry potential with that Nidalee. Saw D Slice put an absolute clinic yesterday. Shavaran up to pick. AD carry at support player. We'll see what he goes with. It's a lot of potential picks. Maokai is up. Um, Katarina. Wow. Goes to Katarina. All right. That's a very interesting pick. Very, very ballsy. Uh, Katarina is very good to pick if your opponents have maybe one stun at the maximum. Um, so Purple Team is going to be able to build a composition around countering this Katarina, and that's actually a pretty big deal. I feel like that's a mistake in their drafting. Whoa! Big picks coming through really fast. Why I try? And Banzer pick up Udir and Lucian. Why I tried to play that in top lane last yesterday. We'll see where he goes with it. On the blue team, Shaco and Poppy are the picks. Yeah, a lot of quick lock ins here. Um, Shaco, really gang focused jungler. Maybe wants to get Poppy or uh, Katarina rolling. You could assume Poppy's going to be in the top lane again against Udir. Potentially Lulu, maybe. Um, be interesting to see where that goes. So, three really. Out there picks though, Shago, Poppy, Katarina, one more so than the other, but you know, this is definitely a different composition. This oh, what the uh, CO if he DC'd, then he DC'd. Oh, he never connected, so that would explain why people may have picked some, some certain champions. Uh, yeah, but you don't get random champions. You get kicked out of the no, lobby. no, I th no. This the other. It was somebody else. It wasn't the random. Yeah, team. it was it was someone on blue team. I'm assuming. Yeah. Yep, his computer crashed. Yep, just rejoin. Yep, looks like somebody sent him an invite. Uh, yep, there we go. If we can. Yep, can we do We can do same at least same bands. I'm maybe I don't know sure if uh Okay, looks like we're good. And everyone's in the same order. So we are ready. Yeah, the bands for blue side were Morgana, Nar and Riven, and on the purple side it was Yasuo, uh Lee Sin. What was the last one? Nidalee. Yep. So and then the picks were Katarina, Poppy, Shaco for blue, and Lucian, Udir. I don't think there were locks in yet. Lulu, Corky, possibly from. Yeah, Manslayer and Matrix Bird had not locked in yet, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Yeah, at least we have some time to talk about it now. Poppy versus Udir, that's going to be a really interesting pick. I don't know who really wins in that. Poppy used to do really well in the meta where she could go with like a 20 or 30 armor page. 
and just dominate AD heavy top laners, which Udyr is if he goes uh, Tiger. Mm -hmm. But actually, isn't Tiger magic damage? No, I don't. They they, were, they changed it to physical damage during yeah, so, the slight tweaks they did to him a while back. Yeah, so a really big full armor page from Poppy, maybe replacing the ye yellow armor marks with HP now, and then having armor glyphs and quints with you know physical damage reds. I feel like you could actually do really well with uh, against that Udyr. And we do see the same bins, same picks, so both teams are comfortable with what they had. Udyr? Good sportsmen's about it. And it should be Poppy and Shaco here. Oh, there's the Shaco. And there's the Poppy. So we're right back where we were, and we were seeing Lulu and Quirky here. It's probably what'll end up going down. Um, Lulu. Having through a lot of champions once again. Matrix Burden gonna get, pull out that AP Quirky again. Well, it'll be interesting to see if it's AP again. I'm pretty sure it's going to be, because that's what he played last time. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's really cool. He did really, really well on the AP Quirky last time he played it. He went against the Scion mid, though, so it's a little bit different. Uh, the matchup this time around is going to be Quirky against Katarina. And Quirky's not going to have any way to stop her ultimate, but does have the Valkyrie. Oh, I don't have summoner blockers up. My bad, guys. I noticed that someone had some troll summoners, and I realized, oh, my summoner blockers aren't up. My bad. But, Manslayer, gonna go with Aatrox. Interesting. I know he used to play that in the jungle a bit. But this is back when Doran's Blade was the jungle starts. And Fizz instead of Corky. So Matrix Board is not going with his signature Corky. Kind of sad to see that. I really like this Corky, but Fizz may be the better pick against Katarina here. A little bit interesting to see. What Matrix Burning could do with that with that Fizz in the mid lane against Sovereign's Katarina. I have not seen them play that champion, so we'll be interested to see what he can do. I know he plays a little bit of each lane, but mostly focuses on bottom lane, so... Gragas pick. That's what Kyle's main support. Um, not much else to say. Last time we saw it, a bit over aggressive, died to a tower, a couple tower shots early. Uh, probably not going to happen this game. Probably going to play a bit more safe. Maybe still with some calculated aggression, but definitely along the lines of a more passive playstyle. Uh, and then Ceos. I think I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. If you want to say it in the chat or uh, in Twitch chat, please tell me. But Ceos, Ceos. That we're going to go with. I'm going to call him Cheetos. 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 Uh, Locks I'm going to call him Vayne this game because I, I don't think the name rolls for me. C.O. Sios. I usually go by champion names most of the time anyway, but regardless, see the Thresh lock is the final pick. That's definitely a really good pick. I wanted to point out that they needed some more CC, just a bit more reliable CC for Katarina, and now I feel like Katarina's going to have a really hard time getting good ultimate and softness uh, against this purple team. Especially with the very reliable stun of Udyr Bear Stance, going to be able to stop her. Whenever she jumps into the teams, that'll be a really probably the most reliable source of stopping her. But then Flay from from Thresh is probably a good close second. Yeah, definitely. Aatrox jump is there as well. Every champion has a way to either avoid Katarina's ult damage or stop it or both. So very good picks from the purple team to build around that Katarina. Now they just have to worry about their bottom lane not scaling too hard. I mean, I think blue team's laking composition is insane. They're going to have yeah. the split push with uh, Shaco, and then they're going to just ha group his four with Poppy, Katarina, Gragas, and Vayne. And they're going to be able to pull off some really sick stuff with Gragas ult into, you know, a combo. And to Poppy will be pretty crazy late game. And Vayne is obviously really well scaling. Um, but on the purple team, they have a lot of, like, very tanky champions. Um, aside from Fizz and Lucian, uh, Udyr, Atrix, and Thresh are really, really tanky. And so Shavaron might have a hard time putting out some serious damage in these late game fights. Definitely will be interesting. Let's see if Kateri can get rolling. She can become quite unstoppable, but they do have Purple Team does have the tools at hand to slow her down. Definitely. So you see the double exhaust to specifically target that Katarina and Poppy dive. Um, smart pickup because you don't want Katarina doing insane damage in late game fights, and you need some way to stop Poppy's damage in late game fights because she's unable to be damaged by whoever she holds. It'll definitely up to why I try in this top and to really shut her down. Uh, Manslayer 
might have to focus attention there, but also maybe focus on getting Fizz ahead. That could also be quite advantageous to Purple Team to get this Fizz going. Now, I doubt it's going to happen in this league, but in a actual like league game, I wouldn't be surprised to see Purple Team actually, or Blue Team 2v1 this game. Mm -hmm. um, Vayne and, well, Vayne alone is just really good in the 2v1 because she gets to farm up without getting harassed in lane. She's going to have a really rough time against Lucian Thresh, and so... I think a 2v1 would be really smart for the blue team. Um, though Poppy is awful in 2v1s, and that'd be really unfortunate to put her in that situation. But You could argue that Udyr is just as bad, though, with that. Uh, yeah, I guess. Udyr has the tiger he, or the he's turtle really, He's really good with the jungle follow, though. If, they, if yeah. the team went that deep and went all the way to the LCS and went with the jungle follow. Yeah, and it's not even uncommon in, if a 2v1 does happen in solo queue as well. You'll have your jungler follow sometimes. Um, but I don't think it's going to happen in these games. I think we're going to see very standard lanes. And since that's going to happen, I'm going to give the bottom lane advantage to Lucian Thresh. I think that bottom lane completely outclasses the blue team's bottom lane. Uh, Vayne, not very good in the 2v2, and neither is... Well, Gragas is good, okay, I'm sure, but I'm not sure it'll be better than Thresh. It also will be said, will be, to be said, uh, Shaco, very hit or miss champion, feast or famine, however you want to call it. We'll see what Mr. Fuffles can do on that Shaco. With the yeah. choose me with the exhaust for the little extra dueling potential. Yeah, I've never seen Mr. Fuffles jungle, but from his mid lane, he's very either really, really good and really effective in fights, or he gets completely shut down. And so Shaco seems kind of like his champion if he gets going. I feel like he'll be an absolute terror on the blue side. It's gonna be hard though, as. Lucian and Fizz, the, the real squishy champions on Purple Team, both have gap closers. And both have really effective ways of getting away from Shaco. Yeah, I don't know if Shaco really has the option to gank this bottom lane as Thresh and Lucian both have very good, you know, escape patterns with, you know, Thresh's Flay and Lantern and Lucian's uh, Relentless Pursuit, so. It definitely will be interesting to see what Mr. Fuffles can do. As you, I think you said earlier, Definitely might be looking to focus to help, help, help out this Poppy in the top lane. Get her going. And if she can get, if Poppy can get uns, can get really unstoppable late game. Yeah, Poppy's one of those champions that's just really uh, impossible to go against when she gets going. Um, it's kind of cliche because why isn't she pick more if she's so unstoppable? Well, Poppy's just very weak to the 2v1. Uh, she's the weakest 2v1 in the game. Uh, up there, really. Um... And if she's not getting going, she's very useless. Mm -hmm. If she's even, she's pretty good with farm. But the big thing about Poppy 2 is it really limits AD carry meta. When you play against Poppy, you can't play champions like Kog'Maw, like uh, Caitlyn, because they're just going to get ulted and instant die. Lucian might be okay. I'm not even sure his jump will be enough to get away from Poppy in these late fights. Has she has some farm and maybe a couple kills here and there. Mm -hmm. So very, very scary if this Poppy gets going. And so yeah, Shaco might just try to snowball Poppy and... Poppy could solo carry this game, possibly. You know, because if they use all their cooldowns on Poppy, Katarina gets to do as much damage as she wants. Bane gets to do as much damage as she wants. Shaka gets to do as much damage as he wants, so. Very interesting to see how this blue team composition will play out. Going in, I, I'm also just to see the uh, support Gragas. You don't see support Gragas too much anymore. And you don't, see, you don't see Gragas much anymore in general after his nerfs to his barrel and really focusing the attention a little bit more on his W. I think that does help support Gragas, though, as lower cooldown on his W means he can do a lot more damage in fights as a support. Yeah, Gragas saw some play as a support for a little bit after his rework, kind of died down and became more of a top laner, um, and since has received nerfs to his top lane. And so, he's in a pretty decent spot right now, just not too, too amazing. I can definitely agree with that. But definitely still has the insane initiating power and disengage power, which could really help this really squishy team outside of Poppy on the side of blue. Yeah, he didn't lose any of his utility in the nerf, so he still has that very good ultimate that this place is very hard. He still has the slow on his Q, and he has now even a stun on his E, so. Greg is a force to be reckoned with. 
I believe he lost his attack speed slow on his Q, but I could be wrong about that. That was, I think, a while ago. Yeah. So that's the only like big utility nerf he got hit with. Aside from that, he still has all his utility that he had previously. And for the purple team, I feel like their picks are pretty straightforward. Um, even though you don't see much Aatrox or Udyr, they're very straightforward champions. They go in. Uh, Udyr has a revive... Or, not Udyr. Aatrox has a revive passive. Uh, has an ultimate that gives him attack speed and damage. Um, Udyr does a lot of damage and very tanky. Like, there are two champions that just build a lot of tankiness and do a lot of damage. So, something to watch out for there. And Lucian, the AD carry that's played pretty much every game. There's not really much to talk about that everyone doesn't already know about him. Uh, the only interesting thing about Lucian, in my opinion, in this game would be build path, depending on where Banzer goes with it. He could either go attack focus with the IE. Or he can go spell focus with the Trinity Force, so that'll be something else. You see a lot of the higher level players, I think, more leaning towards the uh, Infinity Edge route. Yeah, as, definitely as of late. As it really allows him to also scale really well. But we'll have to see. Yep. Uh, certain pros like Wild Turtle really like a BF Sword pickaxe into uh, Brutalizer Yumus, so there's definitely different iterations of build paths for Lucian. It's interesting, though, you'll see now, going a little more deeper, is that a lot of AD carries, individual different champions having their own real build paths. We can see at this world's the build path for Tristana changing, where instead of rushing static shift, now people are getting that one offensive I one off, uh, attack damage item, whether it's pickaxe or BFs or whatever they can afford the first back. And then they'll rush the static shift. So it's really even interesting, the evolution of AD carry build. Is nev not the same cookie cutter build now that both thirsters have been nerfed. Uh, yeah, and then the changes to Infinity Edge and stuff like that. Um, like, even at the beginning of the season, you saw, like, AD carry build either lean towards Bloodthirster completely or lean towards IE. Ever since the Bloodthirster change and the slight IE buff, you saw IE heavily favored. And it still pretty much is, but now seeing all these champs with different builds instead of always rushing the same old thing, like, uh, Bloodthirster. I mean, it's really exciting to see. Bottom lane. Chell's gonna get hit by the hook. Jumped in on. Wister Waffle is going really low. Gonna try to get away. He's got the box down. Matrix running, flashing in. First blood over to Why I Try. And now they're going on to Poppy. Poppy has that passive. Probably not gonna go down. Is gonna live in the bottom lane. Vayne was able to get away from the two man group of Matrix Python and Banzer. And now Banzer and Matrix Python gonna maybe look to move in on this blue buff. Or red buff, I'm sorry. Yeah, they're going to do some aggression, but this is really bad for Shaco. He hasn't put down any boxes yet, and there's only 30 seconds until his buff spawns. He's only going to get one, maybe two boxes down before it happens. So he actually might need a lot of help in the leash, whereas Shaco normally doesn't. Yeah, he'll only get one box down before the buff spawns. Yeah, that is not looking good for Shaco. That's not where he wants to be, as he uses those boxes really to prevent him from taking a lot of damage in this jungle. Yeah, not yeah. going to be able to get a match. He looks like he'll get one more box down. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's gonna get one more box. That is not too much damage. Usually, from a shaker, you're expecting I think four boxes to help him leash. Uh, makes his Python whiffing the blue buff. This time, he's just a bit there. Makes his and soft run. Already starting to see us in the mid lane. And the first one is actually going to prove pretty big for Udyr. He's going to get to pick his trades now with those movement speed boots. And he extra, and he doesn't get extra potions or a ward. Might have been the, that's the only other option he could have gone with, but decides to go with the, oh, I get to choose when Poppy trades with me. Not the other way around. So, interesting build there by why I try with that first blood money. Yeah, boots allowing some really nice mobility. Ooh. Poppy is known for having a lot of movement speed. Really hard to get to. So, the extra, the extra tw was a 25 movement speed. Could help him quite a bit to keep up with that poppy. And we see these trades in the top lane. Why I try just getting the absolute best of them. Uh, completely chunking out for a four name not found. But dun dun dun. Shaco knows he's doing the buff. Yeah. Shaco knows. Check it out. He's got the ward over. Mancer pulled it in. He puts on a box. He's going to get the red buff. He's going to jump it on to Mr. Fuffles. He's going to go really low, though, as Aatrox will do in the jungle. He's going to try to run away. He's going to try to apply the red buff. He's going really low. Udyr is on his way. Mr. Fuffles will pop the blood pool yeah. and go really low for it, though. He's going to go down. 
Who will take him out? Oh, oh he, gets, him, he gets the kill on a Manslayer in the bottom lane. Matrix Python picks up the kill. On to Kylath. Manslayer wow. does go down to a, it, I'm not sure to what that was. was that... It had to be an auto attack or a red buff or yeah. something. Oh, it was the Theo's getting there. flayed back. He's going to go down. Banzer with a kill. Red team off to an early lead. Why I try going oh, really well with Poppy. The Ignite goes down. Well, the E from there Poppy takes down Udir. Why I try underestimating the tankiness of Poppy with that passive. Big thing is, why I try has teleport will not lose a lot of these minions. So, well, it was a great kill by Poppy. It's not going to do that that much to him. Let's see why I try responding right now. And there's the teleport. Yeah, so a lot of action happened. Manslayer got invaded. Mr. Fuffles actually took a little bit too long to go in on the red buff. Decided to go all the way around. Um, I don't know if he thought there was better position there, but... Uh... Manslayer invading Mr. Fuffles. He's going to have to watch that. Mr. Fuffles getting jumped in on. Doesn't get knocked up. It looked like he was right in the dead center of that. Mr. Fuffles going really low. Going to pop back. Manslayer... Gonna see that box drop though. Gonna get feared. Katarina is here. This is not looking good for Manslayer without the. He's gonna flash at the wall. Mr. Fluffle is right there. Not gonna jump in on him. Gonna let Manslayer go. And Manslayer's flash is down now. But yeah, so Manslayer ended up getting the buff top lane. Dying to Shaco though. Because he got a little over overzealous. Went not in when he was really low HP when he could have just flew away. And let, in, uh, let Y try pick up the kill. And then ends up dying. And then, as we talked about earlier in this game. Uh, the Thresh Lucian lane absolutely demolishing this Vayne Gragas lane. They just completely outclassed. Lucian is just too good at early trades. And Thresh is the king of kills in lane. Thresh trying to get hook on to see us. Not going to get it. Going to get almost thrown into the wall. Going to go really low, but so is Seos. Seos going to pick up the kill on a Matrix Python. Banzer Ooh, flashes. Nice. The body slam from Kylef will pick up the kill. Now trying to deal some damage to Kylef, but Katarina is here for the kill. And a nice little run by Shabaran there. Needed some gold early game. He's a little bit ahead of his, but Katarina really needs some extra oomph to get going. 404, Nain Malfound going really low in this top lane. Why I try really trying to take up that kill, but the poppy passive really keeping him in there. Yeah, but 404 has to be careful here. I'm pretty sure Udir's passive ticks are extremely low damage, but there's a lot of them. So she has to make sure that because her passive might not affect the dot as much to be a little bit more wary of her HP. Three ranks into that tiger stance. That is three, almost 300 damage over time from one auto attack. So quite a bit of damage. Yeah, early Udir does a ton of damage. He's actually almost full HP too, and Poppy doesn't have a finished sheen yet, so... Udyr definitely still going to be winning these trades, um, especially before Poppy Sheen. Banzer going to roll the Pursuit in, deal some damage over to Seos. Shaco with the pink ward going to clear out the ward that Udyr, uh, that Yatri was sitting on to keep him safe. 404, named 404 going to get some harass over on the Udyr with that Q. Poppy Q does... Quite a bit of damage. So something to be respected. Something interesting about Poppy is she's picking up a lot of potions on top of the flask. It's kind of reminiscent of the old days where you'd get the, uh, uh, what was the gold per five item? The, the regen item. I don't uh, know. Philosopher. Stone. Philosopher Stone? Philosopher's Stone. Philosopher's Stone. Yeah, Poppy used to stack two of them when gold per five was stackable, and that's when Poppy was actually really good. And it's because she had so much regen. And so it made it really powerful. And so Poppy's kind of doing a similar thing where she's buying pots and then having the flask on top of it. This time around, I'm going to finish the Sheen and a Longsword for more trading power. But still has that flask there for the extra regen. Mr. Fuffles strolling down to the bottom lane. Might get... Oh, there looks like he knows. Oh, yeah. Word. There were right there. Matrix Python getting condemned into the wall. Gonna try to get away. Will get away. Fear from I guess is not enough. Doesn't connect. Why I try getting her ass onto Poppy. Poppy going really low. 404. Matrix is not looking for Shavaron but gives up on it as well. <laughs> well, pops him in the pops pops him right in the mouth with that Poppy kill. They didn't even notice here. Manslayer is level 6 and Shock was only level 4. Fuffle's falling pretty far behind already in this early game and he needs to do something soon to get himself back into this game. Oh, 404 goes in, pops the poppy ult. That's going to be increased damage over to Y. Try the ignite is ticking. 
Is he going to try to turret dive? No, he will not. Why try? He might be able to get out with his life. Poppy incoming again. Going to knock him into the wall. Going to hit him. Going to take him down. But Udyr will pick up the, uh, the kill from the grave onto Poppy. Yeah, that's yeah, Poppy's close and ignite again. There's a Katarina in this bottom lane. There is a tr ward, though, in the next bush for Red Team. They will spot her out if she tries to move up. But they don't see her yet. The they Grog is all gonna gonna knock him down, and then and then Seos gets a nice knockback with the Condemn. Grogus picks up the kill with Katarina able to pick up an assist. They went in on the Ma Matrix Python, not able to pick up the second kill, unfor unfortunately, for the Red Team. Yeah, uh, Gragas, really great ultimate there to push Bunzer, or Banzer Solution into the team. Condemned to keep him there, and then Katarina there to put on a little extra damage they needed to finish him off. Sovereign coming into this mid lane and chunking Matrix Burden, now at half HP. Interesting Katarina build, choosing to go with the Negatron Cloak as her first uh, component item. Before, before getting absolutely chunked in the top lane, though. Oh, here comes Mr. Fawfuls, though. Drops a box, gonna get stunned up by Mai I try going extremely low. The minions are on him. Will they take him down? Why I try letting him go? Yeah, why I try does a lot Matrix of damage. Matrix Python pulls Manslayer into the fray with the with the with the lantern. Co is gonna get hooked up, going really low. Matrix Python will pick up the kill. Kylef is next on the agenda, getting slowed by Manslayer. The the calling is going through. It's not gonna be enough. Manslayer jumps in for the kill. Sovereign is here though. Pops the ultimate. Manser loses his passive. Banzer gonna try to get some shots up onto Sovereign. The Ignite is sticking. Chauveron picks it up still through the, a the Aatrox passive. Yeah, the shield might was almost enough, but Manser just follows the last tick of Ignite. Chauveron very low, though. Has to be a little weary here. Maybe trying to turn 404 on. getting stunned up by Udyr. Gonna knock him into the wall. Will he be able to take him out? They're fighting back and forth. The spear oh. stand stun is enough for Udyr. Why I try to take him down. A very close fight in the top lane. Mr. That's Fuffles absolutely huge for Udyr there. Lane. Gonna get jumped in by Matrix Burden. If Peter Fuffles is just really behind this game, just not able to really stand toe to toe with anyone on this map right now. Doesn't even have a completed Elder Lizard. So, and with Manslayer having already Elder Lizard down, looking maybe going for a Ninja Tabby as his next item, potentially. Matrix Burden finds Mr. Fuffles, throws the ult on him. Now he's fighting the clones. He knows that Mr. Fuffles is the one to the left as he's got the blue buff. He's going to go down, though, to Katarina's burst of Mr. Fuffles. Not killing. quite enough. Sovereign going to help Mr. Fuffles with this red buff. The box should be enough. Mr. Fuffles will take it down, and Sovereign will clear it out. Yeah, luckily for Fuffles, had just enough time for Chavaron to get there and finish off Matrix Burden. Chavaron 3 or 202, having some really good roams, whereas Fizz has been staying in lane and farming, so a bit different mid laner style right there. Banzer and Cios, about 8 CS separating these two champions, these two players. Yeah, actually a bit surprising that Banzer hasn't been able to accumulate a bigger lead over Vayne. Uh, he's had control of the lane most of the time, but apparently just getting a little zoned by this Gragas. Interesting item choice from Seos. He's picking up double longsword, maybe going for a Brutalizer. I know that some Vayne players do like the Ghost Blade on Vayne. We'll see what he goes with. 404, gonna dive this bit by Major's Burden in this mid lane with the ultimate, not taking any damage from the turrets. Kylaf getting slowed up by Manser with that red buff. Manser ulting. Kylaf gonna use the body slam. The minions are blocking the calling. He gets thrown under the turret. The turret will take him down. Kylaf with a great barrel gonna pick up the kill. Mr. Fuffles coming in his bottom lane. Gonna slow Matrix Python, but nothing really gonna come from it as Manser will throw the slow to dissuade him from pursuing. Yeah, Banzer's one auto wasn't enough to finish him off. Didn't decide to life's pursuit. Instead of doing that, uh, just tried to get out. And the shark goes down onto Sovereign, but he jumps over to a ward before he can get to him. Well played by by Sovereign to get away from that. Yeah, a lot of very close fights. Sadly, working... Matrix oh. Python getting condemned into the wall. Silverbolt proc goes down. Gonna flay Seos away. Throws down the lantern for the shield and gonna walk right but away. But here comes Sovereign. Um... Besides, it's not worth it. Just gonna get out of there. 
Fizz is trying to come down, maybe trying to get some action. Mr. Fuffles going pretty low against his dragon. We'll pick it up though. Matrix Burden looking for kills, but no, the fu Fuffles jumps over and so does Sovereign. Yeah, Mansar was nowhere around to contest that. It's a free dragon for the blue team there. I'm getting them that little gold they need to be in this Why game. try? Gonna pick up the middle turret, having already picked up the top turret. He uh, stuns up Katarina. Can he get the Tiger Sands proc? No, he won't. Kylaf gonna exhaust him. I don't know what they can do right now. Katarina, not sure can he, is gonna be able to burst. Why I try? So exhaust wasted on Kylaf. Manslayer is here. Gonna slow down Kyle. And Kylaf hits minions. He's gonna get stopped and dead in his tracks. What? Sovereign going for the ult, but he gets, but all of them get knocked away by Kylaf. The the passive for Manslayer gets popped. Manslayer goes down. Why I try picks up Kylaf. Gonna try to turn his touches to Sovereign. Gonna kick him up. But see us there with the roam. Gonna take him down. But Banzer in this bottom lane will take out the bottom turret. Yeah, and the 2v2 fight actually almost goes completely in Blue's favor because of a... Matrix uh, Burden gonna drop the DFG, the, the Shark, gonna be enough to take down CLs in the mid lane, 100 to 0. Matrix Burden looking strong right now on that Fizz. Yeah, a lot of trades there. Um, In the middle lane, Blue came out even with Red at the end. Uh, two for two, Bane got a kill and uh, Katarina got a kill. Gragas and Katarina died and so did uh, Udyr and Aatrox. But a turret went down in the bottom lane for that, for Bane being in the middle lane. And then because Udyr was in the mid lane as well, Poppy picks up a tower top. So pretty much even trade all around there. A two for two and a tower piece. Interesting inter interaction I never saw there. You can actually sweep out Shaco boxes. Oh, actually, though. Uh... Did not know that. <laughs> Kyle, I'm going to try to pick up this Wraith. Mr. Fuffles will pick it up with the two shiv. Matrix Python, though, is slowed right now. Gonna try to get away from the four-man army that is blue team. Gonna have to exhaust Sovereign to dissuade him from, from continuing on. So exhaust down for Matrix Python. Matrix Burden, though, does have his exhaust, but has a Poppy coming up behind him. Manslayer Obviously. does spot him out. Manslayer are gonna get chunked. 404 and 89 found knocks him into a wall. Gonna take him out with another Q. The damage of Poppy is already unreal. Cos picks up a kill on the Matrix Python in his bottom lane. The ult from Gragas knocks him into the wall. Couple more attacks, but the heal is popped to keep him safe. Bands are gonna get away with his life. Sovereign diving in on the Matrix Burden. Matrix going really low. 404 and 89 found. Gonna go in for the kill with the Poppy. Oh, Sovereign's gonna die. And Bands are oh gonna pick up the kill. Sovereign looks one shot. Mid turret gonna go down for blue team. Yeah, but a inner tower is gonna go down top lane as well. So far, two turrets for one for blue, but Udir is still pushing. Oh, here comes the Poppy. Wow, that damage. Poppy going in. She's she's gonna try to take out Manslayer. Manslayer really low. Gonna go down to this Poppy. Poppy trying to run out of here. Gonna just turn her attention to the major party and chokes him to half. Knocks him into the wall. Not gonna have oh. enough time for another Q. Make just well, mid auto attack life. right there. Poppy dealing so much damage right now. Has the Trinity Force going for that Blade of the Ruin King likely. Don't think she'll go for Gunblade. I do know Poppy's used to build that, but I don't think this is going to be the, the item of choice. Now gonna look towards. Actually, maybe uh, is Blade of the Ruin King that good on Poppy? I know that uh, when Unicorns Love played it, that's the second item that he, the top laner who was playing Poppy did pick up. Oh, wow. Uh, that's so, interesting. Uh, probably more for the active. The move speed's probably pretty big on Poppy to stick on top of the target with the extra move speed from W. Um, yeah, that, I guess that'll be the item. Uh -oh. Fizz trying to go in. Does not land the ultimate, though. Seos going to get away from this, but Magic's burden oh. likely not. He's going to go down. Seos with the kill and on a killing spree. Poppy's damage is just insane right now. The Trinity Force, the Bridgewater Cutlass. She's looking powerful, and with that ultimate, only one person can damage her. If she gets that on Matrix Python, that's no literally going to be no damage. Or next next to literally no damage. <laughs> yeah, Matrix Python does deal some damage, but not enough to really prevent Poppy from going in hard. Yeah, the thing was Matrix Burden bur missed his fish. He saw that he missed the fish and still decided to kill the vein. I think that was a bit over aggressive. Uh, there was no way he could have killed her in the end. 
He missed all of his big cooldowns. He used the E to try to get to her. And even that didn't hit, so... I don't know what he expected to happen there once he was under tower 2v1 and even 3v1 once Poppy showed up. So, a bit of a misplay there by Matrix Burden. Quite the over-aggressive play for Matrix Burden. Unfortunate that his ult did not land, but... Probably should have backed off once he noticed that. If he noticed that. Might not have noticed that it missed. As they say in sports, uh, gotta have the ball in your hands before you shoot it. So, gotta catch the ball. And it's weird, the purple team probably, I feel like they won pick ban pretty hard. But unfortunately for them, their picks are just so far behind. They're getting mechanically outplayed pretty much everywhere. Poppy getting much better roams off than Udyr, but Udyr is better, I think, one-on-one. -on -one. Um, at least at the moment. But then once Poppy gets her items, she's an absolute terror in fights, while Udyr really doesn't do anything in these uh, 5v5 fights. Poppy gonna pop the W. Gets a lot of movement speed from that W. Actually maxing that second. Let's see, gives her 3 per stack, so 30 extra free damage. 30 free damage for Poppy. Which activates her W, she'll get full stacks of that. So... Activate W for the movement speed and pick up 10 stacks of her passive, of her W passive. That's a lot of damage. Free pickaxe. Not too shabby. Yep, and Poppy's only with Shaco here. The rest of the team went to go do Dragon. And Red does not know about it. So this should be a free Dragon again for the blue team. I believe this is their second one of the game. They'll be very happy with that. Their gold lead is non-existent right now. Red's still in the lead with a 200 gold lead, but after this dragon, they should be up at least a thousand gold. And it's a thousand getting exactly. jumped on. Gonna jump to a minion, gonna get away. I'm gonna eat that exhaust for free. Mr. That was pretty Falfo's big. Mr. Falfo's going really low. He's gonna guess get away. Major Burden going low. He's gonna go down to Katarina. Here comes 404 though. Four people Good. trying oh, to get some Oh my goodness! That jumps damage. in onto Banzer. Banzer going really low. One more Q will surely take him down. He goes down. Matrix Python getting body slammed by the Grag is gonna flash the wall. See us and Sovereign oh. gonna try to get away. Picks up Mr. Fuffles but goes down to Sovereign. And 404 thought he had a little bit more damage than he actually did. Went in 2v1 and just died for free to Y try and Mansla or an Aatrox, so. Or Mansler. Wow. Really inconsistent there. Sovereign getting jumped in by Aatrox, gonna go in. Getting stunned by Oh, Manslayer's passive gonna go down. The stun from Bear Stands not going to be enough. Kylaf picks up the kill, but there's his support. Yeah, a lot of people getting really over aggressive here. Manslayer going in 2v3, thinking maybe him and Udyr had enough damage because his teammates were coming up soon, but they did not. He just got stunned up and insta killed. Matrix Burden going to clear the ways with Banzer. This is not looking good for Blue Team. They are really getting caught in really un unfortunate situations, allowing Poppy to roam free in these really open fights. Getting a free kill on Banzer with no one really near Banzer. I need to probably group up and really try to abuse the weaknesses of this blue team team comp is that when they're in a 5v5 team fight, they're really squishy. Poppy picking up the cooldown boots, gonna get more Qs for more damage. Yeah, they're pretty squishy. Manslayer, not quite tanky enough yet. He went with the Elder Lizard early, so he was pretty squishy early on. Starting to pick up some serious tank items now, but it might be a little too late. Um, Poppy is just really big right now, just doing a lot of damage. And with Also, that Udyr started out with Blue Day the Rune King, not very tanky at all. Oh, we have a pause. I'm going to take a quick chance to actually fix a key binding, guys. I have not had my drag scroll this entire game. All right, one sec. I'm going to make a quick phone call since we're going to pause. Back in just a sec. But looking at builds a little bit here, we're on them right now. Poppy has a dagger, likely hinting towards Blade of the Rune King as that second second offensive item that Bridgewater Clitless will build into. Sovereign picked up that Abyssal Scepter. I was gonna was trying to make was uh trying to make a find a time to make a point that he had picked up the components for that. Wasn't sure if he was gonna go for it. Does indeed go for the Abyssal Scepter for that twenty magic magic resist shred. As well as the DFG, so bursting really hard when he goes in for his ultimate two, that single target. Bane does pick up the Blade of Rooking and the Ghost Blade, as expected when she had those level long swords. So in a f for that, I believe it's ten seconds on Blade on uh on Ghost Blade, Yoma's Ghost Blade, that you get that buff, which we can check right now. 
It's six seconds. Okay, um, for the six seconds, she's gonna be really strong, have a lot of attack speed, and really gonna be able to proc those silver bo bolts. B of Sword as well, likely gonna be going into Infinity Edge. And she already has the Blade of the Rune King, so no real need for a second life steal item. Grog just picks up the face of the mountain. Maybe looking for a Randuin's next. Have to see how much money's in his bank. Yeah, I'm likely a Randuin's. Probably didn't have enough money for the Warden's Mail before. And we're going out, coming out of the pause. Round up on items. Stresh has the Talisman Ascension going into likely a Banshee's Veil next. Probably should have maybe looked towards Locket of the Ar Iron Slayer if he's going to choose a Magic as this item. As it would really help his team here against that Magic Shred of Abyssal Scepter. Counteracts that completely. But instead going for the Selfish stats. Not sure I can get behind that as a Thresh. Infinity Edge and a uh, Vamp Scepter. On only the items for Lucian. So we'll all Basically a half an item to a whole item behind. It's a whole item behind this uh, vein here. Not looking as strong as vein right now. Fizz has the DFG looking maybe towards the Void Staff for to get through all the magic resistance that blue team might stack eventually. But they don't want that right now, so be helping him deal near closer to true damage. Mancer on this Aatrox. Likely going to build Spirit Fistage out of that Spectre's Cavill and Randuin's. And Udyr with the Bladed Rooking, and likely a Randuin's coming soon. Blue team trying to siege up this mid lane. Red team here to defend it, but blue team kind of scattering. I'm not, they're not the greatest siege team. They don't have any poke. They're very all any all any team. They really are fighting on... Really only going to get fights when red team allows them to have it. Man, so they're trying to get some damage on the poppy. Sorry about that. No Best friend. Best friend troubles. I'll sort them out now, though. I just went over some items. Uh, interesting items uh, to be noted. Uh, Miss Scepter on... Onto Katarina. The dagger on Poppy. Probably signaling Blade of the Ruin King. Yep. I agree with that. Abyssal Scepter a little weird. Uh, worrying a lot about Fizz when he's not really doing that all that much right now. Um, maybe a little preemptive to make sure that Fizz doesn't do anything, regardless of fights. Mm -hmm. But we shall see. Also, does Poppy's Q deal magic damage? Poppy's Q does deal magic damage. So that does help Poppy out if they're in the same in the same fight. Yeah, that's true. Hook goes out from Matrix Python, not gonna land. This blue team actually has a really good ult uh, or tower dive composition because they Poppy could ult someone random like Thresh and then just go all in on someone else and tank that tower for a Matrix good amount Python of time. Matrix Python trying to get his ult and deal some damage. Interesting that he didn't allow that to be hooked. Almost could have baited out a fight there, but instead... Yeah, I saw a huge ult with from Kali F there. Um, not much else to say. Ooh, say. I didn't even notice he threw it out there. Yeah, so, big win. I didn't miss everyone. It was pretty amazing that he actually managed to, or she actually managed to miss everyone. I, there was a lot of people very close together. Perfect little spread from the red team, though. And red's actually zoned off from their turret. They're going to be able to get a free uh, inner turret off this. Some nice rotation by blue team, but a pretty poor choice of all red team to go inside the... Alt from Fizz, gonna land on a Sovereign. Sovereign going pretty, going really low to Fizz, but Fizz gets burst. Shaco goes down to Panzer. here Banzer. comes Poppy from behind. Poppy See coming from later, behind. Lucian. Gonna go alt on him, dealing tons of damage. The Poppy not gonna be able to pick up the kill, though, getting run off. Banzer yeah. going low, going down to the vein. Seos goes down and gets traded off by Banzer. Manslayer's passive goes down. Gonna pick up the kill on the Sovereign. Three for two for the red team. 404 is still hovering around. Gonna have to walk away. Oh, the hook lands, but I don't think we're gonna see any pull in from My Matrix Python. Would pretty much be suiciding at that point. Yeah, Poppy, instead of choosing to finish off, Lucian runs away and lets the team finish it off. Uh, probably a smarter move. Allows her to live and the rest of the team possibly to live. Uh, they did it, but it, it might have been the smarter move. Here goes Y try. Gonna try to deal as much damage as possible. The box goes down. Y try getting knocked to the wall. The exhaust goes down onto him. Ooh. And it's a big whip by Kyle off there. Kyle with his Weston goes down. Po uh, the exhaust actually went down onto Poppy there, not onto Y I try. Yeah, that was Thresh's butt. In return, they're gonna get a dragon off this, off their superior vision control. Lucian gonna likely check it. Um, 
Seems pretty scared too. Pretty pretty wise not to go face check that area without any wards. And red team's gonna see that this uh, dragon is gone, but Poppy gonna have to gonna have to try her best to get out of here. Poppy has no flash. Doesn't have flash. Gonna go down to Banzer. Yeah, unfortunate backing spot. Hulk oh. lands on to Sovereign. He's gonna hook in. The shark goes up, lands on to no one. Makes his python going really low. Gonna go down to Sovereign. Sovereign getting the reset, going and getting a double oh, kill. Oh, the damage Look, from looking, Sovereign. Looking for the triple kill. CS, CS going in, gonna pick up the kill on a Matrix Burden. Reset for Katarina. Why try going extremely low? Sovereign with another kill, tr killing spree for Sovereign. Triple kill in that little, in that little skirmish. Yeah, and a four for zero in that fight. Overall, a four for one because they call Poppy off before the fight. But big moves by the blue team there. Great play by Chavaron and uh, Chelos to really just pull off those kills. They just did a ton of damage to the team. And in the end, they just finished them off. They did a lot. A really interesting buy right there from Shaco. Picks up the Sword of the Occult. Full damage Shaco. Uh, definitely... Very, very interesting on that buy. Not sure I agree with the start of the occult, but we'll have to see what he can do with that. See if he can get that stacked up. Maybe opting to play a bit safer now, trying to get a lot of assists off these fights. Uh oh. Poppy going in on a Matrix Python, 404, dealing tons of damage with that. Trading Force and Blade of the Ruin King. He's probably picking up Distortion Boots and Blade of the Ruin King on the last back. Watch Definitely. He values that move speed a lot from the 13% uh, bonus from Distortion. Also the 20% cooldown reduction. So. Poppy. Maybe look for someone to jump in on. Not gonna find anyone. Four members of the red team. Hovering around towards his Baron. Maybe thinking that red blue team is doing it. Not gonna word it. See that they're not there. Sovereign's bottom lane, and Shaco's doing his red buff. Red the big, oh, sorry. red buff the goes big, over to Banzer. Yeah, the big thing going on is that Red really doesn't have that much time left in this game. I think once Poppy finishes the next item that she picks up, whatever it may be, it could be defensive or it could be a, um, I don't even know what it could be. It's just whatever item she, Poppy if gets. She, if she once, picks up a big armor item, she's gonna be really hard to kill. If she picked up like a Frozen Heart yep. or Thorn Mail, some bit because she already has really innate tanky stats from her passive. She really just needs more armor to reduce the incoming damage. Yeah, and Chavron's only about 500 gold away from finishing off that Zanya's, and IE is very close to Vayne as well. So basically, when they hit those three item uh, cat or uh, point, and IE is picked up by Vayne, so just Zanya's now for uh, Chavron and... Ghost thrown down the ultimate from Poppy. She's, oh my wow. goodness, the burst on the Banzer. And he goes down. Will 404 name not found be able to get out? The shark what? misses. The jump in will assist in taking down. Kylaf going really low. Ults them all the way. The Fizz takes him down with the dot. Mr. Fuffles jumping behind him. Going to try to get away. But Savaranda running for his life. Makes his python with the hook. Oh, the war jump will save Katarina. Yeah, nice play. Well, not nice. It was a okay play by Poppy. He uses both of the summoners to kill Lucian, but the teammates end up dying, or Kalaf ends up dying for no reason after uh, Poppy's already Sovereign dead. Sovereign going really low. Why I tried getting on him, but gonna jump to a ward. Mr. Fuffles and Sovereign in enemy territory. Gonna try to get away. Yeah, but I think all he needs to have now is Sean needs to pick up his uh, his hourglass, and they need to just group up. They definitely can win yeah, fights at this up. point with all these uh, big items completed. Bane is going to be doing a lot of damage in these fights with the Yumu is activated in the Infinity Edge. And that's... it looks like Poppy's going for Wit's End. I believe that's the only melee item that builds out a recurve bow. I would assume so. So that's going to be your mattress item. That's going to increase her damage too as she's going to shred the armor or remove the armor. I can't even think of... Renown's Hurricane builds out of that. Yeah. Ashore's Tooth builds out of that. No, 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 no it does. doesn't. The only two items that build out a recurve bow? Are they? I could have sworn there was one. There was, there was, uh... The spark, right? Used to. Ionic spark, rest in peace. Now blue team try and do this, this Baron. There's two wards from red team, so they, they have double the vision on it. It's already at half. Vayne are really good at taking the Baron. Red team knows Lucian though was in the bottom and having to run up. 
This Baron's at a thousand health. The shark goes down. Oh, no! Midflayer steals it. Kylef getting exploded. He's gonna go down. Double kill for Matrix Burden. Saw Varon going low. Will he be able to get out? The flash from Manslayer. The Zhonyas, he's gonna go down after that. Zhonyas wears out. Manslayer getting the shutdown gold. Three for one, and the Baron red team breathing new life. Now, what will they do to Capwest on this Baron steal? Will they go for this middle turret? It looks like they will. Why I try going to tank this up, and they'll easily take it with the tank that Why I try has. That was the huge turn that Red needed there. Um, they were falling further and farther behind in this game, and with that Baron steal, they're going to pick up two towers and inhibitor, and maybe. And uh, that should be about it. But this bear must gonna last longer than it'll take to take these. Uh... Oh wait, they're not gonna go for the inhib. Now three members up, Manslayer really low. Yeah, maybe the safer choice. They do have Baron still, and they're gonna have Baron when they come back. Maybe. But that's what they needed right there. They were falling farther and farther behind, but this huge Poppy and this huge uh, Vayne and Katarina. So, and actually, the item that we forgot about, I forgot to tell you, was Sword of the Divine. Um, if Poppy picks up Sword of the Divine, someone is gonna get one shot. Oh man, sort of divine. I forgot about that. There's a dagger, so they could they either wits and wits. It could be all three of those items. Unlikely going to be rune on Hurricane though, as it only gives attack speed to melee champions. We're gonna see that they're spotted out. <laughs> Interesting ward placement by whoever placed that. I like that ward. Yeah, I'm gonna say I'm gonna go 90% sort of the divine. I have faith that Poppy's gonna buy this item, and I'm actually really excited for when it happens. Poppy's going to be doing a lot of damage. We already saw Poppy doing half, a little bit more than half HP on Lucian with uh, the Q without the sword. Imagine when it comes. Oh my goodness, three insta crits, and that's going to be a... Whoever has gets hit by that Poppy is going to die. Yep. Why well, try going to face is getting absolutely chunked by this Poppy and everyone in that bush. Why try going low? Poppy Poppy's not done yet. Him. Poppy going to pick up the kill. 404. Make, name should be found as Poppy... Showing his stuff on that Poppy. 8, 6, and 2. Making some big plays for this blue team. Yeah, absolutely huge plays. It seems like top laners in these games mean a lot. But not to discredit anyone in the blue team, they're all performing very well in this situation. Oh, two man knockup from Mancer. The shark lands onto Mr. Fuffles. He's going really low. Gonna somehow get out of there. The calling goes on 404. And Here comes 404. Going in onto Banzer. He's gonna duel him, gonna take up the kill, but he's gonna have to run for his life. Matrix Burning picks up the kill on to 404. Savaron, not Kyla taking turret. They're gonna pick up the inhibitor turret. The Baron of Red Team unable to defend this. Manslayer coming back in. He got full HP. Going in on to Seos. Gonna pop the ultimate. Gonna focus attention over to Kyla. Kyla looking pretty dead right Seos here. Gets the heal goes out. Seos gets hooked. Whoa, He's, what the, a flash. He gets knocked up. The, 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 the condemn into the wall. He will go down. Why I try respawning? Matrix Burn trying to get out of there. Gets damage onto Sovereign. The hook goes out. Not going to land for Matrix Python. Blue team could have been devastating. Three members live though. Very, very low HP as well. That is absolutely huge for the blue team to get out uh, low HP. Had they, uh, had they had maybe one, two up more auto attacks on them, they would have all fallen there. So, very, very big stuff there. So, guys, we have a sword divine poppy. There it is. So, I am ready to see this. I cannot wait for poppy with sword divine to just absolutely, unfortunately for Banzer, ruin his day. Banzer is going to have to be a scared man from now on if he sees that item. Yeah, uh, Poppy really prioritizing Banzer in fights. He's been unable to do anything. And this is what I was talking about the pregame. Well, if Poppy becomes a meta champion, Lucian's not going to see as much play. He cannot do anything against this Poppy. Um, unless, he's done it, unless he's able to do enough damage in that small window of kite opportunity he has. I and think if... I think if if uh, Poppy became meta, we might even see AD carries. That's how strong Poppy is against them. Yeah. Not sure we'll go that extreme, but it'd be interesting to see the adaptation to Poppy in the meta game. But yeah. It, yeah. Poppy is just too easy to counter. Um, in the meta game, that's why she'll never be meta. Yes. But she is a very good niche pick, and obviously working out very well in this situation. Able to get to her late game, didn't? Not having the greatest farming time, but 159 CS to Udyr's 166. 
And yeah, has a lot of kills though, and has a lot of like flashy plays. Really, um, we haven't seen much Udyr crazy stuff. But we've seen ton of poppies destroying Banzer. Interesting. Poppy picks up a Fiendish Codex. Gonna be interesting. What 404 picks up with that Fiendish Codex? I mean, call me crazy, but I think that might be a DFG. Could be. Um, DFG what? might be a bit overkill though. I don't think he needs any more damage. I think going full tanks the option from here. Um. Yeah, but, but I guess 404 wants just that much more. Red Team Inhibitor is, is destroyed. Matrix Python lands the hook onto Sovereign, not gonna pull in. Yeah, and Baron Buff is completely gone off the blue team now. So you're taking a couple shots from the vein. And you can see Banzer's build's built completely to try to survive this Poppy. He went Bloodthirster for that extra sustain and shield. And he also goes Guardian Angel, so Poppy has to kill him twice. Picks up that Guardian's Angel. So he can have second life in these fights when Poppy just goes in on him. So now that Sword of the Vine Poppy might need to find another target. Uh oh, wow, that vein just crit Lucian very hard. 200 damage crit. That's only cut into his HP, not even counting the shield. I don't think it shows uh, HP to take away from shields. Oh, wow. Probably around 400, 500 damage. That is not good if Vayne is critting for that much right now. We are heading into this league game, though, so it's not uh, completely uncommon to see. Um, almost 38 minutes into the game. Full builds, usually around 47. Man, Sarah goes and gets a double man knockup. Gonna ult, going extremely low. The Blood Pool will give him a second life. Makes Britain going in on a CS. CS goes down. Has to use the Zanya. Spava Ron going extremely low. Matrix Burden and, and Y. Try goes up, popping, dealing tons of damage. Manslayer's Blood Pool finally popped. Killing spree for Manslayer. Gonna pick up. Savaran, 404 going low. All of his teammates are down east for red team. Manslayer oh, with a crazy been, initiation. They have some minions on the Nexus. They're going to have to clear these out. It looks like they might be. Oh, no, cannot balls. save the Nexus turret. And now they're going to have 30 seconds to really push up this game. They're going to have to rush down middle and try to pick up something. Can. I don't know if they have time, though. They're so far away. Yeah, it looks like they're just gonna have to clear it out. That's the problem of being behind them. Their ping, blue team is pinging out Baron. They might have to run there to stop red team from taking if they can clear out these minions in the mid lane. Yeah, right. usually it's not too big of a deal to have one in him down, but they had that one minion wave in the middle pushing for so long that they got to the Nexus turrets, even enough to take out a Nexus turret. So, pretty, pretty big wave that happened in that mid lane. I think maybe they should have cleared it out a bit sooner. But if they did, they might have lost that tower bottom and any chance they had of winning a fight. Manslayer trying to do this Baron. I don't think this is wise. Blue is all up. Manslayer, gonna have to jump over the wall. The pink ward spotted him walking to Baron, so he knows that blue team is on his way. Jumps over the wall to safety. But now he's at half HP. So now he's gonna have to heal up in the for in the jungle. He has no offensive item other than Elder Lizard. So he's not a really scary HX except for the initiation power he provides. And he's been getting those initiations. The matter of if he can get him more. Mr. Fuffle's trying to do stuff with his clone. That's not gonna do much to the Baron. You're gonna get 404 chunked out though. That could be a, that could be worrisome. 404 starting with five almost five hundred health missing. Yeah, you see 404 is going for that DFG as well. Ooh. Sovereign jumps in, gets chunks on Matrix Bird, and now it's a 45, and if they spot out Manslayer backing, which they they don't, luckily for Red that Team. That was a... He misclicked Zanji, Sarah. He meant to DFG to finish off uh, Matrix Burn with the last dagger in the DFG. Unfortunately, misclicks and loses his Zanyas and a possible kill opportunity. But if Blue Team can turn this or into a dra Baron, because Fizz and Aatrox both back in base, they're going to clear out a ward with the pink. They're doing it really fast. Vayne really good at taking Baron. It's a 7,000, 5,000, 4,000. 3,000, 2,000, it's down! Blue Team picks up the Baron, no response from Red Team. They're not even in range to even fight. Oh, but no Red is here. Um, it'll be interesting to see if they go in with the Baron freshly taken. Here comes Fumble, he's going in on going Mindfire. In. Oh man, knock up from Manslayer. 404 going really low from the calling. Double and kill though for Sovereign. Sovereign, huge! Triple oh kill for Sovereign. Double kill for Seos. Shavaran solo carried that fight. He 2v1 Thresh and Fizz, and then killed, Th or no, yeah, killed Thresh and Fizz 2v1, finishes off the Aatrox, or I think it was, I don't even know, one of the Aatrox of the Udyr, and then Lucian goes to Vayne. 
Sean Baron, huge. He should not have won a 2v1 against a Fizzy and a Thresh. I think when we uh, see how this towards the end of the game, I think what we'll do is once they take the Nexus, I think I'm going to rewind and check out that play for the stream. I might want to do it now. I think you can't after the defeat, can you? Uh, I'll rewind now. As we see, the Nexus is going to go down. Blue team going to win. Going to rewind to that fight. It's about 40 minutes and 48 seconds we get to see it. It is Thresh and Fizz that he takes down. And just look at the tandem. Oh my gosh. Gonna watch Sava run. And finish off Udyr. That's who it was. Lancer goes in from the Fizz. Just turns it. Oh, tons of damage from Sava run. Just 2v1ing. And that was the real key factor in that last fight. Blue team. Gonna take the game. Gonna show them pushing one last time. Blue team gonna take this game. Oh, broke the furthest feud. Oh, okay. Not liking me. Okay, I'm gonna stop, guys. It's not working anymore for me. Yeah, so that was game, but that was huge. Uh, Major, or Matrix Burton died with exhaust. Thresh had exhaust and flash. And neither of them exhausted. Katarina or interrupted the ultimate. So, Shavron, though outplaying them, was very fortunate that Matrix Burton and Matrix Python were unable to convert on their summoner spells. And so, yeah, well played. Wow, what a what a last fight. Um, all the rest of the team really had to do was just kill Lucian. And that was it. They had one job, and it was very easy 4v1. As they basically chunked out Udyr and Aatrox before the fight even started. Like, well, well, well it progressed. So extremely well played from the blue side. Uh, I picked purple to win this game because I thought that the bottom lane would go much more heavily in the purple side's favor. Mm -hmm. But in the end, that Poppy, that Katarina, and that Vayne coming up absolutely huge yeah it was a uh, quite the crazy game sovereign coming up big all the carries the top lane carry the mid lane carry the bottom lane carry all coming in really clutch for a blue team getting them so far ahead just not able to keep the poppy down not able to keep the vein down and not able to keep down that katarina either yeah, that was the big thing about this composition that they built around. They had a lot of CC, but none of them shut down Katarina in the last fight. 2v1's the support in the mid laner, and then comes up and cleans up their top laner, and does a ton of, ton of damage to Banzer Solution. So, absolutely huge in that last fight, Shavaron. But throughout the rest of the game, I think Poppy was the real playmaker. Though Shavaron was cleaning up a lot of the kills, Poppy was opening a lot of roots by forcing two to three players to chase after her to kill them, after already taking down Banzer from the fight. So basically deleting one person and having you know, one, two other people just chasing her around the base while the rest of the blue team was able to clean up a lot of the fight. Definitely a well played game by all. Yeah, a lot, everyone on blue team I think played really well. Though Fluff was built behind early very hard, I feel like he did have a decent enough impact in the game where he wasn't completely dead weight. He did do a very good job at staying relevant because it's very hard to shock once you're behind to stay relevant. And then Gragas, um, Throw a couple with ults, a lot of very good ones, and a lot of game-winning ultimates by Kyla. So everyone played very well on the blue side. And they, a lot of people on the or red side played really well too, it just wasn't enough. 